What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Feed the Beast Infinity Evolved Expert Mode. Oh, yeah, guys. So I just got done making some new Tinker's tools. I'm tired of using the old stone ones that we had that <laughs> we have to constantly repair with cobblestone and all that. While those tools are good, they got the job done. I think it's time to move on. Now, I didn't make the best of the best. I just wanted more Enderium tools. So we had the faster mining speed. And then I just put on... Um, other pieces so we had enough durability to put the 400k capacitors on so yeah we have an endearing pickaxe now that is silk touch um yeah we don't really need fortune at the moment so we have a silk touch pickaxe and then we have just a shovel that has the redstone two of those on there and then i put one thing of quartz onto our sword now people have told me in the comments that the certus quartz is actually worse than the nether quartz, which doesn't really make sense because you put on three pieces and you get 72 out of 72. So it should be the same thing as putting 72 pieces of nether quartz on the tool, right? Wrong. <laughs> uh, I went into a creative mode and I was just trying, I went to a, a single player creative world, I should say. And I was trying this out and I made an Enderian broadsword, uh, one, or I made two of them actually, almost exactly the same thing as what we're using right here. And then I put three of the Certus on there, and then I just did uh, 72 of the Nether Quartz, doing it one by one, applying it. And sure enough, you can get four additional attack damage from one Quartz modifier, 72 pieces of the Nether Quartz. Whereas when you do three of the Certus, I think you only get like one or two. But anyway, the tool ended up having like 10 more damage, the one that I was trying in the creative world compared to the other one where I put a few Certus Quartz modifiers on there. Yeah, it's like way better. I don't know if doing it one at a time or if it's just the fact that the Certus Quartz adds so many at a time. Either way, <laughs> yeah, definitely the Nether Quartz is the way to go with that. So I also, yeah, all these are RF based tools. So I have a resonant flux capacitor here. This holds 20 million RF as well, similar to our redstone uh, energy cells over here. I actually just got done making a new one and this is the new one right here and this is filling up. Uh, the old one that we had right there in that spot, I have my inventory here. And yeah, this is going to be moving with us to our new base just so we have some beginning power there uh, until we get, you know, all of our power generation, all this stuff hooked up. Uh, today, what I would like to do is I would like to start looking at storage drawers. Now, I did make a few of these. In fact, I think I just made two recipes worth of these things. And each one of these drawers can hold like eight stacks of whatever the item is. I think that's what it is. Uh, but what is really cool is there is a storage, the storage drawer controller, or I guess it's just called a drawer controller. And what this does, this item right here will be able to read the inventories out of all of the drawers that are, I guess, touching it and up to a certain distance away. So there is a limitation. Uh, but anyway, what I'd like to do is set up a storage system over at where our new base is going to be. I'd like to actually, you know, break ground there and start setting up things uh, over in that forest biome that we were looking at last episode. And then, um, yeah, also what's cool about the uh, the storage drawer thing, that inventory panel we were looking at last episode actually can talk to the drawer controller so it can read all the items that are in our drawers, like no matter how far away they are, I guess. And then, yeah, we can take items in, put items, or I guess take items out, put items in. And yeah, it's just going to work really well, I think, at least for our pre-AE storage. So that's what I'm interested in doing. Uh, so the recipes for these are not too expensive. So to make the, the drawers, you get four of them. So four chests and then five planks. Since we have that tree farm upstairs, that ain't no thing, right? So yeah, we can make a whole bunch of these. Unfortunately, they are going to be the jungle type but I, I guess it doesn't really matter because we don't have to look at them. We're going to be looking at our inventory panel. Okay, so we're going to make these. And then the uh, the drawer controller is one of those drawers, a diamond chipset, some cobblestone, and then a couple of comparators. Really simple stuff here, guys. So first things first, I am going to make myself a whole load of these things. <laughs> yeah, we want to have plenty of storage. And since it only can hold eight stacks of one type of item for things like, uh, I don't know, like cobblestone or whatever that we're going to get a whole load of, we're going to want multiple drawers, extra storage for all of that stuff. So yeah, let me go ahead and collect a bunch of logs here. This should turn our tree farm back on. Uh, get some of this in here. 
I want to make sure I take a lot of this with me. <laughs> yeah, I'm just going to go downstairs and do a whole lot of crafting here. There we go. Uh, I think, what is that, like 44 stacks that I have? That should be a decent amount. Yeah, let's go ahead and make a whole bunch of storage drawers in preparation for moving to our new base. And we'll be right back, guys. All right, guys. So here we are over at the new base. And I'm kind of thinking, and I've already started doing it, that I'm just going to shave the mountain back until it's pretty much at its tallest point. So I'm probably going to get rid of this layer of blocks right here. And we're going to kind of follow the natural curvature of the land and just make like a flat glass wall and we'll dig inside. I think that's how I want to do this. So for instance, this right here, uh, this would be like a flat wall over this way, I think. And then I might just do some terraforming on top to make it look like the mountain uh, went where I think it should be going. But anyway, yeah, we're, I think we're just gonna do something along these lines here. Shave this all back. This new shovel is so good. <laughs> I'm glad that I finally uh, upgraded the Tinker's tools. Yeah, I really, really like that. I was almost thinking I should have made the uh, the three by three shovel, whatever that is. I can't remember the name of it. But anyway, I was thinking about making one of those, but we'll just do that some other time. It's fine. So yeah, we'll shave this back, something like this. We might even go back a little bit further. I don't know. Uh, I would like to have, you know, something to walk out here, maybe have like some kind of a deck or I don't know how we're going to do this base, but this is just kind of like the things I'm thinking about as I am building. Uh, so yeah, I think we're going to shave this back one more layer over here as well. Something along this line. And then I did bring a whole bunch of glass in here. I'm going to um, use the chisel mod. I'm going to turn that probably into the quite clear glass unless some other glass stands out. But I kind of want to have a clear view out <laughs> outside from inside the base. That was the whole idea behind this. So yeah, we'll do, yeah, something like this. We'll get rid of all these blocks too and then make this all flat like so. Cool, cool. Yep. So let me go ahead and do a little bit of work on this, guys. I'm going to hollow this out probably. Uh, get the glass wall up, get some torches in there and all this, and we'll be right back, guys. Cool. So we have the basic shape of the area dug out down here. I haven't finished this. I haven't done any prettying up or anything like that. Uh, all I've done is just dug out back until we started breaking out into, I guess, the outside. <laughs> just trying to see how much space we have back here. And since I have some storage drawers on me, I just kind of set these down and place in the extra blocks that I was digging out here. Uh, we might go a little bit taller, but we can't really go back further much like here, for instance. If I go back just a couple blocks, we break out into the outside. It was somewhere around here. Anyway, I covered this back up because I decided this was going to be the furthest point that our wall is going to be. Go and do this. Yeah, we. I'm definitely going to come back through here and, you know, make the walls nicer. We're going to put in a floor and all of this stuff. But, you know, just want to bring you guys back in before we do everything. <laughs> uh, okay, so I was doing some research on the drawers, the the uh, storage drawers mod here. So I was kind of thinking previously that we might be able to do some kind of an infinite storage by using the drawer controller, going out 12 blocks, how far this thing can see, and then maybe sticking down one of the, uh, the sleeves. Let's do... Uh, storage drawers. Yeah, I was thinking the slaves would extend the range that the drawer controller could see, but no, that is incorrect. As far as I understand it, the drawer controller can see 12 blocks to the left, to the right, above, below, and front and back. So you could set up like a huge cube of storage drawers if you want to. I mean, it wouldn't be that great to look at. A lot of things would be hidden behind other blocks, but that's, you know, one way that you can expand out. But for now, I kind of wanted to set this up in such a way that we could have our storage. Uh, so let's see. I was thinking maybe this section of the L-shape area would be where all of our storage drawers are going to be. So let's start laying some stuff out here. So we can go 12 blocks, then we need the controller, and then 12 more blocks, right? So how far is this from this side? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11... 12. Okay, so if we were to place drawers all the way over there, it, the controller should be able to read it. This is going to be a lot of storage. Whoops, don't put the drawers in the drawers. We don't want drawerception. I did it again. <laughs> That's going to get me. Every time, you just can't spam these things. So yeah, I think we're going to do like the full wall, something like this. 
uh, just full of these things all the way up to the ceiling. I did it again. <laughs> Dang things. <sighs> Rage mode is about to be engaged. Okay, so there we go. We're gonna have like a full wall of this stuff, right? And then our controller, when we put items in, it's just gonna randomly select one of these drawers, drop items in there, and everything's gonna be all happy. I think that's the way I wanna do our main storage. Now we might also hook up some of those, like the diamond chests and things like that for overflow. I know there's ways that you can lock these drawers so only certain items would go in there and then it remembers that item. So when that item comes back into the system, it'll go back to that specific drawer. I don't know if we wanna do that or not, but yeah, I think this is what we're gonna end up doing. Something like this. And then we can also go 12 blocks this way. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. How are we doing here? Okay, so that kind of breaks out of that little L shape section and we continue on over here, which is fine. We could, you know, set up some machines over here and have our other machines going along this wall, uh, something along those lines. We can also dig down, like this doesn't have to necessarily be a flat floor here. Like this could be just a couple blocks and then stairs down so we could have more drawers underneath. Yeah, that's just some kind of things that I'm thinking about here. So then we can also hook up our cable and we're probably gonna do, let's disable this connection. And we're probably just gonna have that like this with the inventory panel right there, I think. So this says it's offline. All right, you know, we need to put in the awareness upgrades and set this to in out. And yeah, I think like that. And then also this one we got to set up again. So this needs to be set up to in out, I believe, and then always active. So what do we see? We see all of our stuff, cool. So if I put in the quite clear glass, yeah, they get sucked into the system, gets added to the total. I assume it went right here. I, I guess it could be anywhere. I don't see any other spots. Yeah, so maybe it finds the drawer that already has that item in there and then fills that up. Yeah, I haven't really played with this mod too much, so I'm still kind of learning how all of this stuff works together. Uh, but yeah, this is pretty cool. I did end up making like four stacks of these storage drawers. That might be a little too many, uh, a little more than what we actually needed here, but uh, I did want to make sure that we're going to have plenty of storage. Now, the next thing that I want to worry about is how are we going to get items from our base, <laughs> our, our starting base, all the way over here? Yeah, that's the next thing we got to figure out. It seems like when we're sucking in items into this inventory panel, it goes kind of slow, like it does four at a time. And I saw, where did those items go? Oh, it took a minute for that to update. Where did, oh, they're right here. All right, maybe it picks it like the closest drawer unless there's one in like a further away spot. Yeah, these are just things I'm gonna figure out as we go. Uh, but anyway, I saw that there were um, upgrades. Let's see, yeah, there's this stuff right here. On item conduit speed upgrades, increases speed by four, maximum is 15. So how do we make one of these? We need electrical steel, a piston, and a redstone torch. So we're gonna need 15 pistons, a lot of electrical steel, and 15 torches. And I believe those go into this right here. Yeah. So we can upgrade this so it'll pull in a stack at a time. Another thing we're going to want to do is probably set up like an ender chest that's piping items into this or the controller. Maybe. Well, yeah, we're going to want this upgrade here. So when we put in stuff, it'll just, you know, suck in the entire stack real quick, right? So that's one thing that we're going to want to do. And we might set up an ender chest that pumps directly into this drawer controller because I think that's another way that you can put items back into the system. So yeah, uh, let me go ahead and uh, yeah, let me go ahead, go back to the starting base. I'm going to make 15 of those upgrades. We'll get that set up. I'm going to try and make another ender chest and we'll check out dumping items from that base all the way over here. And I'll see you guys in a minute. All right, guys, so I went ahead and I spent some time crafting and I went and I made myself an ender chest. Yeah, this is another one, uh, not the white, white, white one that we already have over at the start, but another set. So I made two of these and I used uh, some vanilla rose red dye and just right clicked it on these little things to change the color. So this is a different network than what this ender pouch is connected to. Yeah, so then you can also take these if you wanted to and then use the same color, red, 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 and put a diamond on the front. And that would be yet another network. That'd be your own personal 
uh, network with those three colors. But yeah, since this is single player, we don't need to worry about that unless we really want to have a lot of, you know, the same color channels for some reason. But anyway, what I would like to do is I would like to see how fast we can pipe items out of this ender chest into the drawer controller. So let's do this first of all. Um, yeah, we need to get underneath this thing, right? Let's get underneath here. All right. So if we stick the ender chest, I guess right here should be fine. Uh, I made up an impulse item duct. You can do that by taking a regular item duct and putting 200 millibuckets of glowstone, molten glowstone or whatever onto it through a fluid transposer. So yep, got that done. I uh, brought a resonant servo with us. We want to make sure this goes as fast as possible. Okay, so we're pulling out of that inner chest as fast as we can. So let's just try... Oh, let's grab some of the stone. All right. So grab that stone. We'll fill up this chest and let's see. Oh, yeah. It's just pulling out as fast as it can, right? How's this looking over here? I guess that number updates every so often. Well, I said update once. <laughs> well, it looks like all the stuff went right here into this for first drawer. Okay. So that's kind of cool. Um,. Right, so now we got that set up. Oh, there must. Be, oh, it's nighttime. It is nighttime. Let's pull out the sleeping bag. Let's sleep. By the way, I did upgrade my food. I don't remember if I said that. <laughs> we were eating hamburgers, and I think sometime before last episode, I upgraded these to bacon mushroom burgers. Yeah, <laughs> it's a pretty good food. I think it fills up like your entire hunger bar, or pretty pretty close, if not the entire thing. So yeah, I really like these. I'm uh, trying not to eat as often until our food gets down low and I can't sprint or anything like that, just so we're not wasting it. But anyway, uh, so now we have a way to pull out of this ender chest and into our drawer system. So I can go back to spawn and take all of our items, dump it into the other linked ender chest over there. And yeah, we can bring all of our items here, which is going to be pretty cool. Now, the only other thing we got to worry about is if I'm over at spawn, this area is unloaded. So let's go ahead and set up the chunk loader that we saw that we can do through FTB utilities. Uh, so we got to claim this chunk and then control left click it to chunk load it. So this area should be chunk loaded now, which is really awesome. Okay, so now that that's done, um, is there anything else we wanted to do? You know, I wanted to see if we could pipe stuff from our nutrient distillation into, into our inventory panel here. I'm not sure if we can do that or not. I know we can bucket the stuff in there, but if we can just pipe it in there, that'd be kind of cool. Uh, so I did make some of these hardened fluid ducts. So let's do that and let's unconnect that one. All right, so this should be going into this thing. This is kind of a weird setup. That is a block there. Let's see if we can pull out a block just to see it easier. This inventory panel should be like a block, right? <laughs> uh, and it looks like this is trying to connect into that block. Anyway, let's see if we can pipe into there. Uh, so we'll do this. And if we click on here, yeah, we still got a little bit of stuff, some room available. So we will do ignored. This pipe is filling up and no, no, this is not filling up. <laughs> so I don't know if there's a way we can pipe this stuff in automatically. Maybe it only can be piped in through the back. Could try that. Uh, since we already have the Ender I.O. cable back here, maybe we could get the fluid cables and attach it to the same thing and stick the bucket like right there or something. Yeah, that's something we can think about doing, I suppose. But yeah, it doesn't look like this is going to work. So let's go ahead and turn that off. I think the fluid gets sucked back into the barrel. Maybe I have to take the uh, the servo off. Yeah, there it goes. Okay, so now it's back in the, in the barrel. Well, we'll just leave this nutrient distillation barrel here for now. Um, I can always just use a bucket and then, you know, bucket it in there when we need it. But yeah, let's grab some more of the stone, fill this all back in there. Ender chest hidden. That should still work. All right, cool. So let's go back to spawn. Let's start dumping some items in here and let's just see how this fills out. All right, guys. So here we are back at spawn. So let's try putting some items into our other ender chest over here. And let's just see if it gets pulled out, if that chunk loading stuff still works in all of that while we are over here. I'm trying to think of what we want to send over there. Let's do just like some junk blocks, things that I'm not using at the moment. And it won't have any impact on us if we send those away. So we'll do like all of this, all of those, and this guy's. 
and that. So it looks like it is being pulled out. So it's got to be going somewhere, and I assume into our storage drawers. Uh, that would be <laughs> that would suck if it looked like all the items were going somewhere, and it turns out they're popping out on the other end and just kind of you know <laughs> going out into the open and despawning. I almost feel like I want to fly back there and find out, but no, you know, I think we're just going to do it. I'm just going to send all the stuff over there. This is going to take a minute to send all of the, the things that we want over there, but I think overall this is going to be good. Now, some things we don't want to send over uh, because they don't stack, like all of our different seeds in here. These are things that I think we're either going to leave here or I'm going to end up making one of those dollies, I think, and then move the chest. Actually, I'm curious. The dolly, I know the recipe was changed. It uses this reinforced wheels from Steve's Carts 2. And this is reinforced metal and some iron for that. So the reinforced metal is stabilized metal smelted. Okay, so how do you make stabilized metal? That is hardened mesh, which is... Uh, refined hardener, which is raw hardener smelted with your obsidian and diamond. Okay, so obsidian, four obsidian, one diamond gives you two of those. So we need uh, two diamonds and eight obsidian for one of these meshes. Oh, and the we end up getting five of these stabilized metals. So I guess it's not too bad. It's a little expensive. Some diamonds and some obsidian go into that. That's for sure. Yeah, and the rest of this is not too bad. So what I might end up doing is making a few of these dollies and then moving, like, I guess this chest we'd want dollied over there. And then I'm trying to think if there's another chest full of stuff that we'd want dollied over there. I can't think of anything at the moment. But yeah, definitely this. Maybe barrels. Yeah, maybe if we wanted to bring, like, our beef wellington over. You know, eventually, when we move out of here, I'm going to tear down all these machines and things because... Yeah, these chunks are loaded when I'm online. I don't know if I want all of this stuff loaded all of the time, even like if we abandon this base completely, because that's just more things that will cause the overall lag of the world. So that's just something I'll think about. Uh, but yeah, like all the machines and things, we'll probably tear out like the water wheels and all of this. Eventually, we'll have Tesseracts, and we can just set a Tesseract down here at spawn for power, should we need any power here. But uh, yeah, anyway, let me go ahead and get some stuff moved over, and we'll be back, guys. So I just got done dumping a whole bunch of stuff into the ender chest back at the starting base. And I wanted to come over here and just kind of see how much storage we had left and what things are looking like. So yeah, it's definitely working uh, from the closest to the furthest away. You can kind of see how we're at this diagonal line. I assume like this is the next one and that's the next one after that that it'd fill up. But yeah, we kind of got these diagonal lines along the side. Now I was putting in some one-off items like uh, some of the blood magic stuff in here and other things like that and i wasn't really sure like how much more i could continue to do that now also i know uh the storage drawers has like the compacting drawers so you could put in i don't know like gold nuggets or whatever and then have a little display for gold ingots and gold blocks or you could put in gold blocks and do all the other ones for you so that would be kind of cool we might look at doing that but i don't know if we really need to do that another thing i would like to see is if uh, if we do have those compacting drawers, if all three of those items would show up in here, like we just put in gold ingots and then we can pull out gold blocks through searching or whatever. Uh, but yeah, I haven't really <laughs> sent all of my processed ores over here. Like I said, I kind of wanted to see what our storage was looking like. And yeah, I'm not really comfortable with how little storage it appears that we have left. Now, I can't go either side anymore. So I'd either have to go up, which is the surface, or down, or... We could, uh, like I was saying before, we can make this like three-dimensional kind of a deal and start bringing the drawers towards us. So I haven't tried this yet, but I do want to see, like, if we were to bring uh, the storage drawers out here like that, I put my burgers in here. We can't see those, right? Yeah, the burgers appear right here. Cool. So we can make this, uh, you know, deeper if we want to. It doesn't have to just be one block thick. So that might be an option. Uh... I'm not sure if I want to go down or not. I kind of want to figure out what <laughs> I kind of want to figure out the layout of this base before I go crazy like that. So anyway, I'm going to spend some time here, figure out what I want to do. I did make two of these dollies, by the way, and 
Yeah, it just left the rest of that metal unsmelted. I got some other stuff made. These extendable wooden posts I found are kind of cool. Uh, back in the immersive engineering, actually, I guess we just search for post. If we search for post, we can see they're right here and it's one treated wood fence plus a stone brick. And that just gives you like the bottom section of that post. Yeah, I made up some of those because I want to bring power over here eventually. But yeah, these are kind of cool. You set those down and just put one of these treated wooden fence on top of it. And it acts just like uh, the, the wooden post or whatever that we made previously. But these you can keep making taller and taller and taller. I don't know if there's a limit. And then I assume you can hit it with a hammer and then bring out the little arms and then move power wires around or whatnot. Uh, but that's just something that I thought was kind of cool when I was crafting more of these posts in preparation for, you know, setting up power over here. And yeah, I thought you guys would kind of think that was cool too. All right, guys. So we got pretty much everything moved over here. There was two more chests that I decided not to uh, send by Ender Chest. I just used the, uh, the dollies on them because it has like all of our precious smelted stuff. And then there was some other random items that I don't really want in these storage drawers. They're kind of like one off things, like all these different books. Each of these would use up its own different cubby hole in the storage drawers, like these uh, miscraft pages. I think we can't even use miscraft in this pack. I don't really know. But yeah, there's like a lot of one off things here that I thought didn't really make sense sending over here. And then all of our precious materials, I kind of wanted to put in by hand <laughs> just to make sure we we're going to have enough space for everything. Now, one thing that I have been noticing since I got this thing set up, uh, trying to think if there's anything I don't want to put in there. I guess we don't want the dollies. I want to keep those on me and my burgers i don't want in there and well i guess we can put in the chest that's fine okay yeah things that i've noticed so far about this storage system when i look at it my frame rate goes way down <laughs> i guess that's to be expected uh because it's got to render each and every different one of these pictures we have moving uh icons or whatever yeah so yeah my frame rate goes way down when i'm looking at this like for instance we have three and i'm looking over here it says 68 FPS, which I guess is fine for recording, but like if I move around stuff, that definitely goes down lower. And then, but if I turn around here, just so I'm not looking at that stuff, like it goes up, you know, <laughs> about 100 FPS, something like that. So anyway, there's a definite FPS loss just by looking in this direction. So as soon as we can move away from these storage drawers, I think I'm going to. Uh, I might even look at doing a diamond chest storage system and using some of the Java barrels for things that we're gonna have a lot of items of, but I guess we'll see. I don't know if this turns out to be a problem, we'll definitely have to do something else, but yeah, that's just things that I've noticed. Oh no, I'm gonna die. I'm gonna die, I'm gonna die. My jetpack's gonna stay here. <laughs> Dang it. Uh, I wish I was quick enough to get my jetpack in here because now I have to walk that entire distance. Well, I guess we have the hang glider. Oh man, that was the thing I forgot to do. That was the thing I forgot to do was to bring my hazmat suit. Okay, well guys, I tell you what, we're going to end the episode here. I got a long trek ahead of me. Get all the way over there, get my gravestone. Yeah. Anyway, guys, that's it for today. Thank you guys for watching. Remember to leave a like on the episode if you liked it. And we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye-bye.